that I thought that I had only two slots for lambda equation while I have three slots for lambda equation. So now I'm going to be less stressed. I thought I had to finish by the actual the material limb blood, but that's not the case for sure. So tomorrow you have nothing to say. Say it again. So tomorrow you have nothing to say. Because... I was I was worried I was worried to go too fast or too slow, but then. They forced me to put the names of people on the schedule. I realized that I have okay. a fair slot purchase. Or in case I put the hot potato in the end of Alexander and say, Alexander does all the cannon jobs. <laughs> I want to just scare you by, by putting it. <laughs> all right, so. Anyway, with... I, I, I'm not sure I fully get the. Uh... From relaxation time. I mean, I I mm -hmm. was guessing that the relaxation time is the time to reach the steady state. But you say no. Uh, no, no, no. I am no, no, no. Yes, it's the typical time scale in which you will reach a steady state. Now it's going to be three times tower, two times tower. I don't know. But tower not... is completely arbitrary at that point. So I, uh, it would I, be. I, mean, I or say differently. What is the intermediate? physical time between the steady state and the tau that No, there is, there is no intermediate physical time. So if you think an atom mm -hmm. and you put it in the vacuum, right. the tau r is the time in which you can take from the up state to the exactly. state. OK, and that is then the steady state. And that's the end. OK. OK, with some, uh, where are we? That's weird. That's very weird. Sorry, guys. No, in the no, process no. of effect of moving my stuff around, I swapped conclusions, cause and effect. Uh, you want to break causality? I wanted to break causality, indeed. Okay, this should be good now. Oh, it's all screwed. Nice. I like this fix one here. Okay, yes, now it should be reasonable. Uh, we are going to have ASICs. On yes, uh, we are mentally prepared since several months to the fact that you will want to have everything mm -hmm. that we are displaying, even our DNA. So there is already a Dropbox folder well prepared, uh, fit to be dispatched. The only thing I have to do is to talk with the technical guys to understand how to do that efficiently. For what concerns my part, this is going to be public. Uh, well, I can release blocks because otherwise it's useless. But I haven't updated yet what comes uh, for the Keldish part. But I will now talk to the technical guy and post the limited equation on the cloud or whatever I think they have. Yes. So, okay, right. Uh, with sugar in bloodstream, now we can brace ourselves, I think, for the last yet most massive calculation I'm going to do for you in these days. This is not going to be at all the most massive calculation of the crash course, but for what concerns me, so when it concerns my liability on calculations, that's the biggest thing. Okay, so we have, at the end of the day, to deal with, with the problem, right? So we have to deal with the fact that we have this second order in system math coupling. Um, equation that is now local in time because of Markovianity, and because of choice of time scales, we have a convenient integration from zero to infinity. So we have to deal with HI, right? That's the thing. So we have given a generic form for HI. We said that the operators of the Beth and environment evolve with their free Hamiltonians. I haven't specified B of T, which is the dynamics, the free dynamics of the operators of the environment, because we have done a lot of approximations on the dynamics of the bath, and we are going to use them massively to help ourselves to solve the problem. So I have specified only that the operators of the system are evolving at their own free frequency. And so basically now do perturbation theory. So I have just to compute an enormous matrix element. That's why the calculation is nasty, right? That's a big matrix element, right, guys? So trace over V means summing over all the sandwiches of eigenstates of eigenstates. Uh, sorry, cats and prime of the environment. So sandwiching uh, all the bath operators between these two things. So it's second order perturbation. 
All right. So let me first tell you what's the outcome of the calculation and then tell you how I get it. Okay. So what we will get in the end is that we will get rid of the integral and you will see how, and we will get something like this final object. We will basically get some at the moment looks like permutation, combination between the density matrix of the system and operators of the system, A, at different frequencies with some coefficients in front of them. So it's a very messy expression. The time dependence comes, of course, from the fact that there was a time dependence originally. And at the moment, this looks like a hopeless monster. So the first thing we have to do is to understand how we get to the monster. And the second thing we have to do is to find physics in the monster. But that's the final outcome, OK? What's the mental process you do to do this calculation? Well, the mental process, at least formal, is clear, right? You have to expand this double commutator and to take the trace over the path because of freedom, which means that everything that is belonging to the system, you will not touch it. You will take always sandwiches of uh, objects that contain the path. Is that clear what I mean with that, right? When you have trace of B and you have an operator of the system and an operator of the bath, this thing is equivalent to let OS and let's let them be operator. OS will be untouched, right? Because you are summing, let's say, over a basis of your, let's call it NB, of your bath operators. You are taking this sandwich within cat and bra. A bit of bracket or whatever of the states and so this is a complete basis. This is a of your bath. But of course you will go to operators of the system, right? Because they will do no action. So operators of the system is what will come out of the monster. And in fact, a is an operator of the system, OS is the reduced density matrix of the system. So at least what I'm displaying you fulfills this logic. I will also not touch uh, this temporal dependency in T because at least the one coming from here, right? And the one coming from here because I'm integrating over S only. So the fact that again, a dependence on T on the end at least makes sense. So the coefficient would be the result of this operation here. So we are just doing sanity checks. It's like a student comes to you and tells, I have found the expression, this is this one. You start to do sanity checks to understand whether what you're seeing at least can make sense, right? I'm not saying that it justifies what you see. Okay, so this is the expression for the, for the coefficient, fair enough. It means again, nothing. So how do we get here? So that's the guy that we want to justify. Let's start from the step above. The step above should be understandable, right? I'm just expanding the double commutator. You can convince yourself that this is the answer. It's not important. It's really just algebra. Okay, so let's take one of these guys. They are all very similar to each other. They all look like each other. So what matters, of course, is the relative position between the various objects because there is no commutativity, right? But... <clears throat> Basically, uh, once you understand how to do one of these guys, you understand to do all of these guys. By the way, specifically, this is the second object, okay? I'm taking one, one random guy. So, as I said, HI is basically uh, this thing plus admission conjugate, so there will be always A, B, A daga, B daga, so this is gonna be a very messy object already itself. So again, let me focus on one of the objects that will come out of it. This is the dot dot. So for instance, and I'm focusing on this guy for a reason that you will understand in a moment, let me look only at the combination when I have the same number of daga and non-daga. Because very soon I'm gonna show you that when I have not the same number of daga and non-daga, that stuff will go away. So whenever I will get something like this, 
they are at different times, right? Time t and t prime. I will uh, comment soon on the fact that these guys would be negligible. And of course, also a submission contribute. But when the same numbers of DAG and non-DAG are coming to the game, they are important. And so that's why in this expression here, I'm focusing only in the case when I have the same number of dagger and non dagger. Okay? So it's clear what I'm doing, right? Rho S, Rho B stays here, they don't move. And H I and T, H I, T minus S contains each of them two terms with all these combinations of daggers and non daggers. I focus on one of them, that's this guy. And now what you have to do is that it's perturbation theory in interaction picture. So the operators of the system A and of the bath B will have their free dynamics. We have spent time talking about the dynamics of the A's that will drop out. Uh, of course, don't forget that you have double indices because in general, these are two different sums. And you still leave unknown the fate of the operators of the system B, okay? With getting lost in the map. The next thing you do is that you make an assumption on the path that is already hidden in what we discussed so far. And someone was asking me at the coffee break. Because the path relaxes very quickly and I don't see dynamics of the path, it basically means that this bath is in, a, is in a sort of steady state already. Now, nobody tells you to set it in an equilibrium steady state, but we will do that. So we will assume that the reservoir is in a steady state, so it's density matrix doesn't evolve. I cannot resolve, remember the discussion, the coarse graining stuff below tau b. And because in a steady state, this means that these correlation functions will be time translational invariants. Okay, so when I have here B daga T, B T minus S, and they take trace over B, this means taking the expectation value of this BAF operator. But because it's time translational invariant, because it's a steady state, the temporal dependence is going to be simplified. Time translational invariance, it means that you don't care that this is T and T minus S. You care only about the difference. And the difference between these two times is S. So what I'm saying is that when I take the trace over B of B dagger T, let me forget about the pet exalt and beta because it's not essential for the discussion. This is literally equivalent to taking the expectation value, at least for the assumptions we made so far like born approximation. Now, if I say that this guy, maybe I'm in front of the right. If I say that the bath is in a steady state, it means that it's all temporal correlation functions will only depend on the difference of the two times. It's only the relative times that matter. So here I say bath is time translational invariant. And so basically this means that I can do a shift. Let's say one time is T. The other is T minus S. I shift everything by T, I can. So shift back, bless you, by T. And basically this will be zero and minus S, okay? So you are never, the, the point, is, the, the, the morale of the story is, I know that you don't like the red marker, so let me use the black one. The, the morale of the story is T dependence doesn't matter. So you see, all the time you're gonna have here T and T minus S. But because the path is time translational invariant, only S will appear when you compute these expectation values. That's a big simplification. That's a big L, okay? Because it means that I can now focus on the integral over S of these guys only. There will be no T dependence bothering me. So let me, okay. So 
all those. So basically the coefficients indeed that you are seeing here, these coefficients are the expectation values, so the trace over B, because this is the only thing where B is happening. You have this O B here, sorry. Nobody corrected this. So you see the dependence on B, it happens only via the B operator in HI, or OB, trace over the degrees of freedom of B, that was this guy, that now doesn't depend, as I said, on T, it depends only on S. And so this coefficients, gamma, alpha, omega, what I see, it is the integral over the S, because then think about it, the only dependence on S is now on the B degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom of the system don't have any dependence on S for the way the master equation has been constructed. Because the other dependence on time is OS, but by my copiality, this is a 10 T. So the only S dependence is on the buff object. Somebody's making sounds. Who is that? No, it's okay. I thought there was a question. It's all right. Okay, so these coefficients are the time translation of expectation values of gamma or, 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 or uh, the bath operators integrated from zero to infinity. There is some e to the i omega s, but this is coming from the fact, of course, that I have to evolve the system operators freely, and then we bring some screws e to the i omega s. So, Janet, sorry, this expression that you, you have written about the expression, no, the, the sketch about the hierarchy of the time scale. Yes. It, and the relaxation time scale is it was a time scale of the relaxation time of the bath. Yes, L T R is time scale relaxation of the system, much bigger. Oh, the T B is the bath. Okay, so we are not using this already. No, we are in a sense, and this what I, it's good that you are asking because it's up to point. We are, we are because naively I think that okay we have these uh, uh, correlation functions of the bath. So if the, the time scales that we are analyzing the problem, it's so big in comparison to the time scales of the bad, these uh, correlation functions are steady. They are, they are steady. They are steady. Do you have the dynamics of this? Uh, I like the question. So uh, I want first to say where I'm using this thing, and okay. then I want to come back to the dynamics. Thing. That is the fact that you are asking if they are steady, why there is an independence. First point, I repeat why we are using this thing here. Because that's, the bath is quickly relaxing, and I can't see the dynamics of the bath because it's cross credit I assume it to stay in a steady state. A steady state is what I used to say that this thing would depend only on S. So I am using this information okay. to do the, my approximation to say in a steady state. Then Louise is asking another more subtle question yet important. Luis is saying, hey, but this thing is in a steady state. Why you're talking about the time dependence of correlation functions? I think that when you say steady state, it means no time dependence. Who has this clash of concept in their brain? Is that clear, the question? Is that your question, Luis? By yes, the way, yes. first? Why, why do we, we have a dynamic? Yes, in the so, steady Luis, state? so Luis is asking. So is that clear, the question? You say steady state. For me, we say steady state is not dynamics. Why I have dynamics in the correlation function? Who has this confusion right at the end? Because who doesn't have it will give Louis the answer. You have the confusion, so you will not give the answer. <laughs> <laughs> who has, you have an answer to this? I have a guess. You have a guess. Explain Louis, not, not to me. Uh, also in Portuguese, if you want. No, no let's speak I've... English for everybody. For everybody, uh, my guess is that you have a, when you have a sad state, that does not mean that the state will, will not be have a oscillation. That you okay, you can have a global phase there. Yeah. Yes, not only a global phase, but it might rotate periodically, and if you're rotating periodically in both times, as long as you translate both in the same way, like if I have two points on the equator. 90 degrees apart and they start rotating, their relations stay the same if they rotate at the same time, the same way that you have translation similar to there. 
Are you convinced? Uh, no. The name is Nicholas. Nicholas. Are you convinced by Nicholas? Mm, no, I, I don't think that I understood. Maybe Pedro wants to convince you. I understand what uh, in the static state you don't necessarily are in equilibrium in the sense that you don't have to attain to the tail balance. So you your your uh, currents of probability uh, will oscillate locally, but not globally. The, the, he was saying. I think Luis is still not convinced. I think that next. You want well no, convinced no. Luis? I, I also you also want well. I, 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 I hear. I think I just want to. Martin, no. Mateus. Mateus. Just want to cause me more confusion. <laughs> but when you do time translation, aren't you getting rid of time? That's the question, Luis. Luis, Luis, no, okay. The time, no, no, I, no, no, it's not my question. My question, okay, I, I can understand the time translation. Yeah, in, in the end, the time translation is uh, assuming the steady state and why we have these uh, dynamics in the steady state, yeah. So for me, okay, if you have uh, uh, any dynamics, even periodically, if you are in the steady state, the derivative must be zero. You wanted to contribute. Yeah. So What's your name? Luis. Luis. Luis wants to convince Luis. Go, there's the generous. So my 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 point of view of this is that you're seeing just unexpected value. And because even if you're in a equilibrium state, doesn't mean the expected value doesn't depend. Like, so for example, when in you have to convince Luis, you're looking at I know the answer. I give you so that. when a harmonic oscillator you can have a, a eigen state, or if you look in position, expected value you will see oscillation. So what you're seeing here is just unexpected value, but even if you're in a steady state, you can still have Evolution of this expected value. I don't know. I'm trying to digest things. It's good or not good? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I can give you a more complete answer, but maybe you want to say you look like. So, <clears throat> I think the question is good because it's a confusion that a lot of students have. Let's start from something that everybody agrees on. If I have the expectation value of one observable, and they say that the system is 10 translational invariant, there is no other hope than kill the temporal dependence. So steady state, in this case, implies the expectation value of a single observable will not be there. So, so far, so good, okay? What is creating confusion is the meaning of a correlation function. So something like this. So let's say that you have a steady state. Let's go back to the meaning of correlation function, right? For instance, a correlation function is what? You create a particle at a given time, and you wanna know what's the correlated probability that you can destruct that particle at some other time, okay? So you can always do linear response on a steady state, right? If you couldn't, that would be weird. So if I have a steady state, I can perturb and see what's, let's say, the temporal pattern of the perturbation that I've created. And to convince you that this is not bumbo jumbo, take a simple example. Take an harmonic oscillator and put it in a steady state. For instance, put it on, let's say, one photon, okay, and equal one. That's the eigenstate and equal one of the harmonic oscillator, okay? I could do n equal zero, it doesn't matter. Now you create, so the expectation value, so this is a steady state, right? Because we can put n here, I think it doesn't really matter. N is a steady state, right? Because H applied to n will give me the energy en, and with this being and it's the harmonic oscillator and it's like, okay, now you can match that. That's a steady state. I think we agree on that. Now, if you do A D A dagger T 
minus s, this thing can still be non-zero, right? And have some temporal dependence. So see what happens here. You are gonna get this thing to be n, e to the i omega t, a zero, e to the minus omega. Uh, maybe I should use something else later, but okay, good. So let me keep going and see how much mass I will produce. A daga zero n. People at all will not see that, but I don't think it's good. Okay. So you see, that's what I'm talking about at the whiteboard. Uh, there will be some temporal dependence in the correlation function. And this correlation function will be non zero, right? Because a daga will promote one excitation. A0 will destroy it. Of course, I've chosen on purpose A and A daga, who have a non zero expectation of many. But there is a residual temporal dependence in this object, right? And the residual temporal dependence is, as we said, a simplification of the dependence on T. This thing would be e to the i omega s, exactly like in my slide. So you can always look at what's the temporal pattern of creating an excitation and destroying one how this thing is going to propagate in time. It's like, I don't know, an advanced language to look at a green function essentially and ask its dynamics. So this is called the equilibrium. Then. So sometimes the steady state is equilibrium, like in this case. This is called in jargon, but it's very confusing, equilibrium dynamics. It's very confusing because there is no dynamics, as, as uh, Luis said. So. I think that the, the misconception comes from the following. You have something evolving, right? They reach a steady state. And when you have one single time, it's very clear that when you reach here, there is no temporal dependence. But when you have two times, T and S, what is really giving you dynamics, the non-equilibrium aspect, is the sum of times. And still in the steady state, T minus S is acceptable because it's time translational environment. So this will happen also with higher order correlation functions, of course. Of course, I mean, probably in other ways. Of course, this dependence on T minus S is relevant if T minus S is smaller than the R, because otherwise you have enough time to relax again. Of course. And you can break, if you want, it's like, like you create the, an excitation and you don't, you don't wait enough to relax again to the steady state. So, this two point correlation function is not the product of single point correlation function. And so you are still, let's say, you are creating an out of equilibrium situation and you are still out of equilibrium and you, you put the second observable. That is the moment in which you see the type dependence. This was your confusion? No, this was the first thing that I was trying to. But did you guess. know? But, but did yeah, you know? I understood your derivation. But did you did you figure out? So did you know already the answer to this? Or did I tell you something that it was not your confusion? No, no, no. You you helped me also. So yeah, for me now I'm convinced. <laughs> but but I know people call this equilibrium dynamics is very com is very confusing. I don't know if someone else because it's really a little bit non equilibrium. It's exactly because you create this slight non equilibrium thing. They yeah, see the other but one. this is the point that we are talking about things that can have correlation, right? Yes, exactly. We are not talking of things that can exist, that there is only one point exactly. function. So that's the, the clash in the brain. I mean, clearly, if you are in a steady state, right, this guy will never depend. So this guy will depend both on T and S. So it will depend both on the sum and on the difference if you are approaching it. So you will have to study the two time uh, correlation function dependence. I think this discussion is going astray and is confusing a lot of people, but... Perhaps a, a way of looking at it is that if you don't have this time dependence, that means that you, you are violating signals. For say that, say that. If you don't have a time dependence in your two-point correlation, that means that you are violating signaling. So that means that information can travel more, way more faster than some maximum velocity. So for example, Suppose that I have a two point function of two photons and a thermal state, and my steady state will be a thermal state, right? So I have my, yeah, here the, the thermal state, I create one photon here and I measure one photon there. 
if that two point correlation function doesn't depend on time, that means that the photon will go much faster than the velocity of light. And that is impossible. So the only thing that can happen to point function to non violate non violate signaling is that they depend on time. I am I understand what you're saying, it's correct. What makes me perplex is that you need space to talk yeah. about traveling at distance larger than speed well, of light. Because then you have to bring frequency as well. That doesn't change the picture. You want to say essentially that uh, when I connect two points, I cannot travel faster than the speed of light yeah, so or whatever. But when you say points, you are giving a spatial character. You are talking about the harmonic oscillator. Okay. There is no spatial character. Yeah, in, 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 in whatever operator that I have in, in, a, in a very poly system, and some spatial uh, there is there can be like, like a thermal space. So if I make if I make some perturbation at some point, that perturbation and information created by the perturbation must spread, and then that is spreading the information is the one that measures that mediates the correlation between two different points in energy in frequency, in whatever basis that you have. If you, for two points, do not have this kind of temporal dependence of general distance dependence, that means that information is spread instantly. I completely agree with what you said, that, but you're talking about causality. Yes. You're talking here about something that is important, and it is connected to this because, of course, you can have a situation when you have space, time, and time translation invariant, and whatever you're saying will apply it. You are not saying any single word that is wrong. But we are not talking here. There is no notion of traveling. And because what you say is that basically, if I have a diagram T and X, and I have a correlation function defined in the, the diagram X and T, you are basically saying that there are some points that can never be reached because the speed of light is finite, right? Specifically, this thing is going to be T being one over C times X. If I'm not messing up X and T, but everybody knows what I'm talking about. But you see, I don't have X. In my example, take one harmonic oscillator. There's nothing to propagate from one point to the other because there is no point. There is only one point, and this is the harmonic oscillator. Yeah. Your world is made of one point. Yeah, so, but think in the, your, in the same example that you put, set N equals to zero, Put your A equal to, well, the equation of the determinant of the at some time. So the correlation function will be, what is the probability of if I create some photon in my vacuum? I then, uh, what is the, 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 the transition amplitude or whatever? Yes. Of yes. measuring that photon at different times. So That's correct. completely correct. So there is a, like a, let's say, signaling there that it doesn't depend on the speed, but this information. There is there is a what you call signaling. I understand what you mean. It's time resolution, but the speed of light. You agree that in this case, no, no, I, I don't care about the, the speed of that speed of light. I only care that there must be a let's say maximum. You cannot transpass for transmit information instantaneously. You have to to have some some kind of velocity of medium of doing that. Yes, on that I agree. On that I agree. I still not one that person sure that fits this discussion, but in any case, I think Louise opened a fantastic Pandora box. <laughs> oh, no, it's good, it's good. No, yeah, you, uh, you have to open more Pandora box. We, we need to discuss this, but I think that it's- No, no, I'm, I'm doing it, don't worry. <laughs> I'm cutting it now. <laughs> but I think it's important to have Pandora boxes, okay, guys? Because yeah, if, if, we were all, if we were all passive, that would be very sad. So with this statement, I introduced the third time scale. So I hope I convince you that this expression makes sense and is derivable. I didn't derive that in detail. It will be very boring, right? I do all the matrix elements. I mean, you will want to leave and go back wherever you came from. Uh, so the last thing we want to do is that we want to kill this temporal dependence on the right. We want to get rid of this oscillatory factor. <laughs> the reason why we want to get rid of it is that we don't want we want a simple equation. We want something that is first derivative of time on the left and the same object at time t on the right. So this guy is annoying because then when I'm going to integrate, it will be an explicit time dependence. It's not the end of the world. Sometimes people keep this guy, OK? But for the simplest possible master equation I want to derive with you today, that is called Lindblad master equation, by the way, 
I want to get rid of this guy for simplicity. And so there is in non-GPT field, what is the name? Red field. Red field, okay. Mm -hmm. oh. It was appearing here somewhere. Like... Red field is the name of the guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a color of it. Sometimes people think that it has something to do with physics. There's right. no field that is red. Into the this. Yeah, the PhD, I was feeling that the killing vector is somebody that was. <laughs> no, I, I don't believe that you think that you thought that. The, the pointing vector. It's, like... it's a guy pointing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's if, your name, called... if your name is pointing, they should name it. If your name is pointing, it's very good that they name a vector. Yeah, yeah. I, I if your name is pointing, you need to name a vector after me. After me, yeah. because yeah. Okay, good guys, I think we have guys. So, the way you can kill it is the following argument is very typical in physics. If an oscillatory factor oscillates many times, it's very fast at oscillating, then basically it acts as a guy that over a certain interval is averaging, is averaging u to zero. So basically, if this thing is very fast oscillating, is going to kill everything that is on the right when I integrate from zero to infinity because I will have things to solve this thing, right? So I will never get to integrate. So that this thing oscillates fast, basically it means that I have to identify some time scale, right? And some frequencies. Now, basically I'm saying that I am looking at the problem over a typical time scale that is tau s that I will associate with dimensional analysis to the inverse of omega minus omega prime. And here is very important. I'm assuming no degeneracies. I'm assuming that this thing is finite. And I'm assuming that the time scale tau r of relaxation of the system, that is the time in which I am making sense of this equation, are much larger then the typical time scale where this oscillatory factor is going many times back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So I repeat, when I read T here, I read that I am looking at something over the relaxational time scales of my system, much bigger than tau. Okay? So the way in which this guy will be averaging to zero is that essentially when I look at the typical time t, this time is much larger than the inverse of omega minus omega prime, that sets the time at which this thing is oscillating. But with omega minus omega prime, it is essentially uh, the typical energy difference of the free, if you want, uh, energies of the system that I'm calling tau s for lack of name. So, where essentially the time at which the equation is going that is order of the tower is much bigger than the typical time at which this cosine or sine is oscillating, then basically this is very fast and on a certain time frame is gonna kill the right hand side. So the only thing that is that is left is that I say, okay, I'm gonna keep only the terms with omega equal to omega prime, because if omega were equal to omega prime since the beginning, there will be no discussion. There will be no temporal dependence. There will be nothing that I want to eliminate and then everything will be fine. So I repeat for the third time what I'm doing. So as you see, my, my style is to repeat the same thing two, three times in a completely different way. I want to get rid of this guy because I want a simple equation. As the comment of Dario mentioned, now this is not anymore a stringent notion. People can work without doing what I'm doing now, but we are going to do it because we want the simplest possible quantum mass transition. If omega is equal to omega prime, I remind you that omega and omega prime are the different energies of your system, free, free part of the system. If omega is equal to omega prime, nothing to worry about. There is no dependence. But of the of course, the sum is over generic omega and omega prime. So I have to do something. I have to solve the problem in some way. Okay, omega minus omega prime defines some time scale. The inverse of it defines some time scale. So I'm going to call this time scale tau s. It cannot go to infinite, right? Because I said already that omega has to be different than omega prime. Otherwise, there is no problem to solve. Good. Now, I remember myself that I have to compare this new time scale that I generated with the typical time scales of my problem that is tau r. Because tau b is coarse grain. 
it is basically sent to zero. So this oscillatory guy will look like fast if the time at which I monitor the system, T, which is tau r, is much bigger than this new time scale tau s coming from the oscillatory part. If this happens, it doesn't have to happen. If this happens, then basically I can kill in the summation all the terms that are omega different than omega phi. And so the hierarchy of time scales for what I'm doing in this course is this. So let me repeat. Tau B is the typical correlation time of the buff or relaxation on the buff. We are sloppy about it. Tau S is an innocent scale that is, let's say, a bound. It is, if you want, the biggest of the inverse of the difference of the free energies of the system. It is a time scale that denotes essentially the characteristic time of free evolution. And tau r is the relaxation time scale of the system coupled to the bath. So don't get confused. It is what I was discussing with Dario before. If I have a two level, if I have a two level atom that wants to relax in a bath, one time scale is the frequency of going from up and down, from up and down. This is tau s. Another time scale is the time scale that I get because this atom is coupled to a buff and wants to relax. He wants to get a damping. He wants to go for good from up to down irreversibly. This is called tau r, and this is what you want to monitor with your open quantum system dynamics. So, let me repeat. If I have a two-level atom with splitting omega zero that is in the electromagnetic vacuum, so you have a two-level atom, dipole coupled to the electromagnetic field, okay? The electromagnetic field will have some temporal fluctuations, and these are uh, assets of the temporal fluctuations of the electromagnetic vacuum will be one over tau b, sorry, that will happen on time scales tau b, very small. We will then put numbers later. What I'm calling tau s is just basically the difference of free energies. So tau s is the inverse of omega zero. And then the atom couples the environment and the decay rate, because you know that an atom in the atomic environment will spontaneously decay from basic quantum mechanics. This time scale is instead tau r. What you want to describe with the Lindblad master equation. So these time scale tau s are the coherent oscillations between the two levels. Tau r, the effect of coupling to the environment, is this decay. There were multiple questions, but I think there is first a guy that never spoke. So, so tau r, it's kind of like a different depth uh, correlation for the coherent Yes. Time. Like it's a sort of decay rate Fermi Golden view. Okay. You ask yourself, I have a state, an eigenstate of the system, and I couple to environment, what's going on? Hold on, guys. Oh. They will soon come and tell me what's going on. Don't you forget? Uh, I'm solving it. Maybe, but I think I am almost done. It's good, it's good. It should be good now. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. Fermi Golden Yule, typical. So, 
Tau F is a time related to the season. And tau as a free entity. All right. Are the coherent oscillations. Tau V to the best. And tau R, I can think about it as a, like a direction. Yes, 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 yes. Right. It's Fermi Golder. It's the, it's the fact that you take an eigenstate of your system and it's going to hybridize with this path in this continuum and there's going to be an irreversible difference. That's what you're trying dynamically to describe with the Zimbabwe equation. Good. That's why I was not caring before of terms that have the same number of daga or don't have the same number of daga. These oscillatory factors will die because of this approximation that I'm doing here. Okay, this is the end of the story. So you end up with this object, which is the object that I wrote before without the independent terms. The process will generate some correction to the Hamiltonian that I'm not caring about. This is your final answer. Um, you can always do a rotation because there is this unknown independence on alpha and beta, so you can always write down this thing in a basis in which it is diagonal. It's a quadratic form in A, right? You see it. So you can always rotate it and make it diagonal. This is not a big deal. And that's basically what people call Limblad quantum master equation, as you can see from the name. I know it was a lot, but we are done. Yes. Uh, it said me behind there that the generator of the dynamic is called Liouvillian. With this generator of dynamic, you can move like if the Hamiltonian when you want to create a the evolution, see if you can like create the evolution or do that evolution operator. You can do something similar, evolution of uh so the question of your colleague, if I understand it correctly, is that someone told him indeed that when you don't have this part here, that is the dissipative part, but you have only this guy, they call this the generator. They can talk about a super operator acting on OS called Uvidian. Actually, a Uvidian, when you have an open system, is the combination of a Hamiltonian and dissipator. So the super operator that would generate evolution of the density matrix is called Uvidian as well. And maybe makes more sense in this context because there is no reason to give a name to something that exists already. So the evolution of the density matrix for a system without dissipation is called Schrodinger equation. Liouvillian at least gives me the idea that I need really to do the evolution of density matrix. And that's the case of open quantum systems. So you see, when you have a unitary dynamics, you can do the evolution of the state or the density matrix is totally equivalent. But here I need a density matrix to describe the evolution of the system. I cannot do it in terms of state for the construction. In that case, it makes sense to talk about a super operator called Euvidian that will make the matrix evolve. Because now there is not the alternative to talk about evolution of states that is called Schrodinger equation. So Euvidian normally start to make sense to introduce a name here because you have H plus D and the system does D forces you to talk about rho S. First, you talk about density matrix. Well, that, that part I understood just that the name generator, at least when I heard generator, I think that you can write uh, exponentiate it to make the translation. Yes, maybe indeed. I didn't realize that your question was coming from the fact that I wrote myself the sentence that you said. And I didn't realize that I wrote it already. I apologize, indeed, it is an overshoot. Yes, it would force me to tell you that I have to do the exponentiation of a super operator, acting operator. I don't want to do it, but you are right. I didn't notice it was written here. I thought you were processing alone. Uh, that's that's all right. Okay, guys, so I don't, I mean, these slides, of course, are a, a adaptation of something I did somewhere else. So this thing doesn't exist, all right? We stop here and I hope you appreciate it now.
we really need to evolve this this density matrix or s and not the state anymore, not the cat, psi s, because of the coupling to the to the environment. And I will come back to this point in a second that the that, that the master equation is forcing me to talk about evolution of a density matrix and not evolution of a cat to talk about evolution of states. So let me just go quickly through back every step. So last steps, not ever. We were here. We wanted to get rid of HI. We stressed HI. The operators were going with their free dynamics. We, we expanded the double commutator. We got some expression. Each single term could be done because we could take the expectation value of the, the buff of HI, HI for at least the part that they contain operator of the buff. We uh, put the buff in a steady state, long discussion. We want to get rid of the temporal dependence here. We do this extra approximation to kill the rotating term. This gives me this new name, hierarchy of time scales. See discussion on two-level atoms for do, for do they mean? I ended up in the next slide with exactly the same equation without this guy. Look at it. It would be the same without the oscillatory guy. Hopla. Yes. Now, the only thing that is left is dependence on alpha and beta. But because it's a quadratic form, I can always rotate it with a unitary. And I get this thing that is called Limblad quantum master equation in Limblad form. It describes the evolution of the reduced density matrix of the system in the cap into the buff. When I write this equation, I forgot who is the buff, what are its time scales, and I have also kind of forgotten which was the operator that the system was using to cap into the buff. I still remember which was the operator that the system used to couple to the, to couple to the environment because this AK that I find here, it is only the remnant, right, of this HI that we wrote as something like sum of alpha, A alpha, beta alpha. So the operator that was in the system buff coupling, A alpha appears now as this guy that intrude with the density matrix for us. So I rem the only thing that I remember of my original system, so the only thing that I remember of my original big thing that I had here is the way the system was coupled to the buff. Anything about the buff is lost when I write down this object here. And in this form, with this extra approximation, when I introduce tau s, this is the Lindblad form. Without tau s, you still have a master equation, a Markovian master equation called red field. But we don't care. The coefficients know somehow something about the bath, right? Because they will be connected to the correlation functions of the bath. And therefore, they will know the way the bath was coupled to the system. But now they appear as numbers evaluated at the frequency omega of your two level atom, for instance. So if I give you an inbuilt equation with some numbers and some operators say, you cannot say anything anymore about the bath. It's like a Langevin equation. You have lost information about something that was provoking relaxation down there. Okay, here you will find some suggestions of further reading for people that are interested. Um, let me see how much still I have because I have a third lecture on Lindblad, right? Yeah. And I see a lot of tired face. This is Kelvish, okay. Okay, I suggest to do the following. Which time it is now? 11.54, and they should be done at 12.30. Even 12, even, uh, 12 Where should they be done? Uh, let's see, because 12.30, no, 12.30, 12 I think. 12.30, yeah. so I suggest to do the following. We do a 10 minutes break. I like a lot to do breaks. 
Uh, yeah, yeah. But not only for that, we yeah, lost okay. a lot of... We, no, 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 I don't want to deny the nature, <laughs> although I think there is no necessity to do that. So yes. we we live a lot in a time in which we lost. It's going to finish at 12, so... I'm good. Yeah. Good. Are you sure? I know that you can leave. <laughs> <laughs> I know that yes. you can read, but I don't trust in your yeah, I, don't trust so much. <laughs> I cannot tell you this mystery. Nothing to do. The mystery has nothing to do with you. <laughs> I will tell you it's later. Not personal. Not personal. <laughs> okay, so that's cool. So when we come back, I need three examples. When we come back. We come back at three, right? Three, yes. So when we come back, I want to hear three examples from Marco Vianetti that has nothing to do with physics. You will tell them to die. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you guys. When there's some more approximation that when you have some demarcation approximation and don't you understand that but the bad is that it's saying like most extensive in the sense that the, the, the bad doesn't influence so you can't away from the top away from the top so it's in my top I'm not sure say it again so you're not saying I do the master approximation I follow you yes but but if you imagine, don't you have to assume conceptually uh, that you are in a uh, the bath is in equilibrium or in a non equilibrium steady state, something like that? For for for, for some, uh, she was so I, I understand. Same as Yeah, it's more of curiosity. No, I think, I think, I think yeah, so you're asking, so you're asking for example, I think about the atmosphere, the atmosphere is different, like liver, so uh, it's only used memory in the system. Uh, 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 more than have the system uh, well, the memory that they should have. You're asking for, let me see if I understand it. Books. And we can go together. Would be great. We can. Would be great. I have first time to answer some questions. So if you have time to wait, I am excited to go together. But I have. Let me just see through because it's organic.